we're going to discuss in this video how to read and write to files and how to process files okay so for that we first need a file so I'm creating a file here that will have like cars and then prices so it's like gonna be a car inventory and I actually have named this file car inventory dot TSV the 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 name is not really important but I put TSV because the values are gonna be separated by tabs so for example make oops make Ford tab right then the model is going to be Taurus and then the price is going to be I don't know 3000 then the next one is going to be uh, Kia Sedona 4000 then the next uh, make is going to be Toyota Prius uh, 5000 so these are three cars that I have, and then the first one I have make, model, and price. Okay. So, and you know what? I'm not even gonna use the make, model, and price line here. All right. So I have just cars with makes, models, and prices. That's all. Maybe I'll add one more Honda Civic, and then three Honda. Okay. I'll save this. I just saved it and every value here Ford is separated from Taurus with the tab character okay there's no spaces so if I move the cursor once it jumps all the way to Taurus that is called a tab separated um, file I can separate these things with a space or a comma or not separate them at all it's up to you but um, the point is there, this is a file and it represents something it represents a car inventory so I'll save it now. I'm going to go to a little Java class that I have that it's um, the skeleton of it is already pre made. I'll import Java IO for reading uh, for input and output. I'll call it file examples. And here's my main method. So, what I'm going to do here, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an object that represents the kind of things that I'm going to read. I'm going to read a file. So, I'll create the file object file um, and this is going to be um, cars and that's going to be equals to new file and then my file is called um, car inventory .tsv. okay this is where the file is right so the file is going to be in the same place where my Java class is going to be that's why I don't put any path information here okay and then I'm going to create my my good old friend scanner scanner um, f it's going to be a new scanner with that file in it okay and what I'm going to do is I'm going to say while f dot has next line well there's the next line system dot out dot print line um, f dot next okay all I'm saying is reading the car and then printing the contents now I'll have to save this I'll save it very quickly I'll save it very quickly here there now if I try to compile this this will not compile okay and here's why well, a couple of reasons right um, let's see oh cannot find symbols stern oh sorry okay let, let me fix the uh, the typos here first um, Let's try this again. Oh, and then I have to import, of course, java.util if I want to use the scanner. All right. Now, this is not going to compile because of a very important reason. There's an exception that can be thrown, which is the find that found exception. This can be thrown 
when I when I use files and when I use a scanner with a file. So I need to try and catch it. Okay, so let's do that. Try and then here I will catch file not found exception. File not found exception. And what I will do here is I'll say system.out.endline file not found. Okay? So now let's compile it. And now this is complete. And it should compile and you should see the cars being printed. So let's run. Oops, file not found. Car inventory TSB is not found. So let's see if the car the, the file is there. Say so, um Let's do where's oops where's this guy? My file. I'll save as here uh, I'm gonna put it in the same place where my Java file sits. It does, this is not necessary, but it's it makes it easier to uh, show you the concept. Oh it is there. Cars in Ben inventory.tsv is right there. I'll just copy it in case there's a typo. And let's go to my Java class and see where... Oh, it's cars inventory, not car inventory. That's That, that was the problem. Okay. Oops. Cars inventory. Okay, let's try to save it and run it. Um, at this point, if we run it, we saw a lot of the things here. We saw four Taurus, 3000 Kia Sedona, because the next here basically gets the next string, not the next line. So if I say next line, that'll get me all the elements line by line. Next only gets the next item till the next white space. So let's run it like this, and then of course you see that all my elements are really nicely uh, laid out. Now, we can use the next. The next just gets you the um, the next item, okay? And what we can do here is we can have, for example, if I had, if I had a car object, okay? I could do this. String array, string array, um, car, for example, can be, um, let's, I'm sorry, let, let's not print the next line, but let's store it. So string line equals f next line, okay? And then string car, what I can do here is I can say string car, it's going to be um, line dot split. What split does is it um, a split and then split on the tab character. So what this will do is it'll get everything that's delimited by tabs and put it in an array. So this will become an array of three elements, Ford, Taurus, and 3000 as a string. Okay. And now we know that the last element here is a number. Okay. So what we can do here is we can say, okay, so let's say we have int total inventory is zero dollars, we want to calculate how much do we have in total. So what I can do here is I know that the third element of the card or of the car array is a number. So what I can do is I say total inventory equals integer dot parse int card up two. Right? That's the third element of the car um, thing. And then here at the end and then at the end, I can say uh, system that out that print line total price equals and then total inventory. Okay, so let's compile this and run it. And we run it. Oops, I got a problem here. Uh, line of next line. Car zero one two that should be fine. Um. 
Okay, what's happening here is that the last line in my file is blank, and you always have to take care of this, okay? So in here, I have a line, I have a couple of blank lines, right? They don't contain any numbers nor anything that I can make into an array, okay? So there's two ways to deal with this. One is you can delete that, just save it like this, and then see if it runs, see if the program runs. In this case, I'll compile and run it. And then it tells me the total price is 15,500, which seems uh, which seems reasonable. Right, so 3, 4, that's 7,000 plus 5,000. Um, uh, 7,000 plus 3,500, that's uh, 10,500, and 5,000 is 15. Yeah, that's the price is right. Now, the other method that you can use, I'm sorry, is say you have some null lines, some, some blank lines here, right? Let's save this. But you can you can prevent uh, the computer from reading those lines by saying, um, by doing this, if line dot length is greater than zero, okay? Or uh, any anything that, that can give you a clue that the line uh, can be parsed, right? If line dot length is greater than zero, then you do this. Otherwise, just do nothing. So let's compile this. Remember, I set my file to have some blank lines. Uh, line dot length. All right, there you go. Compile and run. And then this got me the price, even though my file now contains some blank lines, but here I'm preventing them from happening. Right? I'm preventing them from uh, getting that. Now, let's just... We've, we've read a file and we've processed whatever is in it. Okay? Now, the other thing that we can do... I mean, remember that F is a scanner. I could have read, you know, a next, next, and then next, int, or something like that. I mean, I could do all, the, all, the, all those kinds of things. Okay? I just chose to do the split because I think it's clear to put everything in an array element and then parse that array elements. Now, the next um, leg of this thing is to do um, file output. To do file output, you use something called the buffered output writer. Okay? So we're going to create... Um, we're going to create a new file. Um, to uh, We're going to create a new file. I'm going to just copy the text from um, from another place but we need to say where are we going to output it and what are we going to use to output it just like we said what are we going to read and what are we going to use to um, to write to read it we're going to use a file writer this is a file that doesn't exist yet but it's going to exist okay I create a new file writer new file writer and instead of testing orange I'll just call it uh, car makes Okay, and then what am I going? What am I going to use to write on it? It's a buffer writer out, and, and you create it with new buffer writer my file writer. Okay, this is how you create an output. I just named it out for the sake of it. Now, this car makes if it doesn't exist, it will create it. Okay, if it exists, it will delete it and re and overwrite. There are ways to append content to it that's uh, for you to read, but for now, I'm just going to write it to my file writer. And what I'm going to write is just the make of the car. So I'll say, in here, I will also say uh, out dot write line. Okay, and what am I going to write? The, the, the make of the car, which is in the array car, is the zeroth element, right? And we're at that plus a new line. So every make is in a different line. Once I'm done writing to that output uh, file, I have to close it, okay? And now let's see what happens. So, compile. Oh, but there, there's more. Um, oh, it's right. I'm sorry, not right. Okay. But there's more, and this is the compilation where compilation comes in. 
There are a couple of exceptions. There's the I.O. exception that's not reported. What happens if there's something that prevents me from, from writing? So I need to catch that exception. Catch I.O. exception, I.O.E. And then I can say system.out.println print line could not write to file. Okay? Now, remember I'm catching a file not found when I open a file and an IO exception when I try to write into a file. Let's compile this. Now it compiles. So let's run it. I'll run it. It prints the total, right? It prints the total price. And in theory, it actually saved a file. So let's see if it saved a file. My file should be called car makes. So let's open this. Um, well, let's see. Oh, there it is, car makes. And what is it? What, what are the contents of car makes? All my makes, each one in one line. So with that, I conclude the uh, reading and writing to files and then doing some processing with them. What you can also do is if you have a, a car class, you could, you could be filling in the car class with the values from this array or each line that you read, right? So um, this is how you read and how you write to files.